out and welcome and today I am this is the first time I've actually done a video in a very long time but I am uh, responding to a paper by Per by Lund, which I'm not really sure that's the actual name but whatever uh, and his friend uh, for Mises uh, Institute and he just recently got a uh, a award for this which anyway uh, it's entitled, Is It Money Because It Is Redeemed in Tax Payments? A response to Kelton and Ray. In this article, uh, there's a part where he's, where Per Ryland, uh, says, But for taxpayers to pay tax, the government must first make the currency available to them. This could be done in two different ways. For example, the government could simply issue and distribute currency as tax paying tokens by restricting the available quantity and selecting who gets the currency the government could create political preferences distribution effects for example if, ta if taxpayers would provide equal amounts per head those who those with greater tax liabilities would need to procure currencies from others which would cause a wealth distribution from those for, for those paying more to pay and those paying less in taxes to extend that, those with greater income or wealth pay, or, uh, pay uh, higher taxes could serve as a means to counteract inequality, although the government could spend the currency in the economy there and thereby use it to acquire resources for itself that would presume then use, uh, be used to attain preference political ends. Kelton assumes the latter that the government spends is otherwise worth this currency into existence. I would argue that because because those wealthier individuals don't pay that tax, that because that money is not then taxed out, that money is then devalued because the ends have not met it in terms of taxation. So, if if they claim at the far right, the Austrian uh, economists, the libertarians, whatever, if they claim that uh, government spending has created or, or devalues money circulation, then in that case, they themselves actually participate in the devaluation because the taxes, which, as Warren Moser has said, is the provision for government, then devalues that currency because the currency itself is supposed to be taxed, taxed out, creating value for that currency. So they themselves actually created the problems that they uh, blame the government for doing when they pay legislators to make legislation that allow them to keep more of the money through the lack of taxation. So they devalue the one thing that they claim the government devalues by putting more into the system. So they are eating their own tails, which is kind of interesting considering the fact that I believe the symbol for libertarians uh, is, I believe, the snake. So the snake in this way is actually eating its own tail by claiming the government is inflating the currency uh, value by spending more in reality is because the taxation that's supposed to keep the value of the currency at a stable price is actually not because they uh, because their currency that they uh, are given through tax through ta uh, lack of taxation is actually is actually decreasing the, the value of that dollar because taxation creates the value of that currency and that made any sense <laughs> I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to make them I'm trying to make it verbally make sense but sometimes it doesn't happen in my, in my head you know, it sounds better in my head than it does come out or the way I use certain words or terms doesn't exactly go along with the the sense I'm trying to I'm trying to make but anyway Kelton further suggests that government can determine the value of really the demand for the currency in circulation to policy this value determination applies to demand for the currency which would respond to the government's increasing or decreasing the tax due. It also applies to the supply which the government controls by increasing or reducing public spending of the currency as a result the government 
can tweak the currency's market by using measures on both the demand and supply of supply side. I would have to disagree with this because this is where the interest rate uh, the Fed actually would come in because if they raise the interest rates on all loans, uh, no matter what kind of loan it is, that per the percentage of increase in rates that they that they charge, like say the 5%, that's 5% extra on an interbank loan that is actually going towards a loan of housing, business, or the car loan that decrease the value of the currency that is already in the system because you have to pay more to pay for something that otherwise if it was like no close to zero interest rate more money would be available for the business to be able to spend on the goods and services allowing for the prices or spot prices of those goods and services to be lower so in reality, it's not a government in this case that is spending too much money into the uh, in, into the system. It's the lack of taxation for the wealth and the Fed. Uh, the Fed interest rates are going up, decreasing the value of currency, or de yeah, decreasing the value of currency because it adds costs to the to the uh, to the goods and services that are being purchased by the currency that's already in circulation. Well, here's another funny portion, well, not funny portion of this article. Um, the issue here is the is that actual money is accepting the exchange because it is money. Regardless of what form money may take, gold, cattle, seashells, paper notes, etc., we would not expect economic actors to accept it in exchange for goods if it were not already money. That is, because before they knew or reasonably expected, the others would accept it in exchange for goods as as he is promoting misses, um, put it. I think because money only by virtue of the fact that, the, that those exchanging commodities and services commonly use it as a medium of exchange, the decree that something must be used in a, speci a specific type of transaction or when trading with, other, with one specific party. There is not a sufficient explanation for that currency also being used as a general medium of exchange. In other words, and more to the point, the requirement to pay taxes using a certain type of token does not imply that the same token is also money. Kelton uh, appears to make no distinction between the use to comply with the tax requirement and the general use of the currency and neither does Ray. Okay, so we're going to bring that up. Is, uh, the brief history of fiat currency. Now, the Song Dynasty. Uh, I think I think it says 12th century. Anyways, uh, this I'm reading a um, a quote from Brief History of Fiat Currency from Market Madhouse dot Substack. Uh, just check them out. This is from May 14th of 2022. Fiat currency was one of the most revolutionary inventions in history, yet few of us know its history. A fiat currency is money created by government order or, or fiat. In the modern world, a fiat currency such as the U.S. dollar is a nation's official currency or legal tender. Generally, central banks such as the U.S. Federal Reserve issue fiat currencies. All the world's economies run on fiat currency. Fiat currency enables you to walk into any store and pay for your stuff. Internationally, uh, international me, trade and finance uh, re rely upon reserves of currencies. A reserve currency is a fiat currency financial institutions used for international transactions. For example, an American company can use the U.S. dollar in a reserve currency to buy uh, oil in Saudi Arabia or manufacture goods in China. Hence, fiat currency are one of the most important in uh, inventions in human history. And yet, that few of us know where fiat currency came from or how they work. Of the, or the origins of fiat currency, China's Song Dynasty issued the first known fiat currency in the 12th century AD. The Song, Dynasty, uh, the Song Nationalized System, uh, the, the Song Nationalized a system of private uh, promissory notes or letters of credit mer uh, merchants. Had been using for centuries under the song. Uh, under the song, the imperial government began printing a paper currency known as the. I hope get this right. Jia, Jia, Jia Ozi. The, the Jia's Jia. 
the GIOZ was a fiat currency because people used it for transactions. In other words, it was easier to it was easier to carry a paper note than it was to carry on gold. Uh, similar to modern crypt, uh, cryptocurrency the, that was first produced by private merchants, eventually the government began printing and issuing the uh, same thing and making efforts to control and regulate and regulate the money supply. The problem with that is the fact that taxation is only accepted in U.S. dollar in terms of that. So. I don't think cryptocurrency would be actually become a natural fiat style uh, asset. Who knows? Let's see. Uh, unlike modern banknotes, uh, could, uh, that could expire when Kable Kable Khan's Mongol Yuan destiny replaced the song. Uh, that currency they used became the became the Kyo. Uh, one admirer of the KO was legendary travel, uh, travel writer Marco Marco Polo, who popularized the idea of paper money in Europe. Okay. Let's see. Did not the banknotes, although paper money vanished from China, is soon uh, reappeared in Europe. Stockholm's Banco began issuing deposit certificates or banknotes in 18 or 1661. Banco founder Johan Palmstroke. I think Russia, Russia, uh, created the banknotes to prevent bank run. In 1660, the Swedish government began minting new lighter coins. Many Swedish refused to accept the co uh, new coins and began withdrawing the old coins from the bank. Yeah, that's what they mean by reserve demand. It's depending on how many people are willing to use it as a means of exchange, businesses and citizens. This, that's one of the reasons why I don't think crypto first will actually become a thing in terms of that. Anyway, let's see. Over time, the credit notes, uh, which were lighter and easier to carry, because more popular than uh, be, became more popular than the heavy copper coins, they withdrew the credit notes in 1664 after inflation and the government imprisoned Palmerstrup for a fraud. <sighs> so let's see. So actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see that. During the 18th and 19th century, many banks imitated uh, home structure uh, by printing banknotes, charterism. Uh, both both bank, uh, private and central bank printing notes, but notes from the central banks were more trusted. Banknotes became more elaborate as counterfeiting became widespread. So that's one of the reasons why. Um, that's one of the reasons why the Federal Reserve uh, and the Constitution has as law in it, uh, due to the fact that it was easier back then to counterfeit it and use it as a regular uh, currency, when in reality it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't issued by the actual, you know, the, the government of whatever, uh, of whatever you want as far as that goes. Okay, so no explanation for why anyone would accept the government's currency beyond the amount of or before the due date of their actual tax obligations. It is easy to grant that people would be li likely to accept the currency from others as Tobin and Golub note in order to acquire the amount they need for the assignment of taxes. Why would they acquire it beyond the amount of taxes they must be using it? And why would you, and, and why would they accept it before they need it? The quote does not at all address this issue, but only it serves that the government, uh, central governments can make certain as is generally acceptable in the uh, media. This is true. Now, the quote in itself is not true. This not, is, is true. This is not true. Um, because since currency, fiat currency is used as a medium of exchange, it's also the means of exchanges, in exchange for uh, luxury, leisure, stuff like that. That's one of the reasons why people use currency, and not and not just because they didn't have to take, pay taxes. That's the whole point of it being called a medium of exchange. Whatever you exchange exchange it for, that medium, whether it be a commodity or whatever, uh, gets you that. That's the reason why, and it's all dependent on. The supply chain that as it enables the prices to likely go down faster than it is when the commodity is uh, is a scarce commodity, like a car that no longer gets manufactured, gets manufactured at such a slow 
pace that the price of the scarcity within the value of that of that commodity of the car goes up. And that's why a lot of older cars, like the 40s, 50s, and 60s, are higher in prices not only because of the uh, presentation and the maintenance of it, but because of the fact that the year it was made and the history behind the year of that of when it was made and who made it and stuff like that so it, there's a lot more that goes into the value of a commodity than just because of meat because you use currency a fiat currency as a mean of exchange um, so it's not just the value of the currency that you're using it's the, it's the value of what the, what you're buying in terms of the value behind it and but you know stuff like that so this kind of stuff is not what they're is not generally what they're talking about but i think it's important to look at every aspect of the, of the evaluation of the money you're buying uh, the value it has to your to your life to your investment portfolio in, in terms of that as well as what the person who needs the amount who needs the the uh the amount the, from the value of the of the currency that you're paying with what they need it for and all of this stuff so it's the two actors um you know it's dependent on the value uh, the value of the commodity versus the value of the currency so anyway uh, so kind of going to the quote that, that, that this person is uh, quoting from the cult uh, in quotes in advanced societies the central government is in strong position to make certain assets generally acceptable media by its willingness to accept a designated asset in the settlement of taxes and other obligations I mean, the exchange I'm guessing on that one. Uh, the government makes the, that asset accept, uh, accept, acceptable to any who have such obligations and in turn to others who have obligations to, to them and so on. In other words, I'm guessing like international trade, the commodities that come from other countries. That is what like trade deals with China, India, Africa, UK, those kind of things. Since they accept U.S. dollar as a reserve currency, uh, depending on how much their commodity is worth, how much their interest in the United States, uh, in the U uh, U.K. is, in terms of loans, which, you know, like like the uh, like interest rates here, whether interest rates there, and how much they, how much is, how much is added cost on goods and services there, and, and that and that determines the exchange rate in terms of wh how it comes up here. Do we have to pay more? To bring it in, or do we, do we get to pay less to bring it in? So that's what that that's what that's all about, as far as the value of, of assets that government is making accessible because they're because this person is talking about trade, and it's nonsense the way they're talking about as far as trade part goes because they're not taking uh, anything uh, and they're putting the, they're putting the real thought behind this. Unfortunately, a lot of things that Austrian economists don't do and they don't they, they 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 look at they don't look at the open market as being open market in terms of manipulation in terms of legislation that has opened it to you know to price manipulation gouging stuff about like that they, they they don't look at the market as a as is black and white to them as far as that part goes and that's just not how it is the, it's not black and white in terms of that and there's a lot of things that go with it that's what the good thing about MMT is it, it opens your mind to other aspects of the economy it just it doesn't just look at one thing or another it, it looks at the at least it tries to look at the root cause of that and it determines from there uh, what may or may not happen in the future is like with Argentina right now Argentina has 53% of its uh, business industries, or just industries, period, uh, in foreign currency debt, meaning that if the, if the U.S. owns majority of the import-export businesses uh, in what that country, Argentina, that means that they control how much stuff is going to be in terms of bringing it in or putting it out, because Argentina has to... Uh, raise interest on those bonds to allow for the government, allow for the, the foreign currency to pay it back. Or yeah, no. Uh, looking more about that, 
it's, it's adding cost to all goods and services within the country itself because Argentina has to pay the foreign currency and the foreign currency debt. So the more that's owed, uh, the more is going to inflate the cost. I mean, the inflation is going to go up because of the interest rates, because 53%, 53 plus percent, or 50% plus uh, of the industry is an outside currency debt. If you controlled the currency, if you controlled the economy based on your currency, not others, you control the pricing of those commodities within your own system. That's what's wrong with Argentina. That's what's wrong with the U.S. Is the U.S. still thinks that the that the interest rates uh, take uh, cut inflation? In reality, it creates the inflation because inflation in currency is devaluing the currency, and when you inflate when you inflate the prices of all goods and services through loans, which majority of the businesses have to run on in terms of like the first time or whatever. Uh, that creates more more cost to you and that and you don't eat the cost your customer base eats the cost so and that is what Freeman meant, meant by quantitative theory of money it's through price controls or is through uh, currency in the, in the system control and that's worth it and some years later after you pretty much got rich off the whole fucking thing and program people the wrong way. <laughs> he then rescinded it and said he was wrong about the quantity of theory of money. So a big view to Milton Freeman, a big view to Austrian economists who think that free market is the way to go when in reality the only part about free is the, the fact that those who manipulate the pricing are free to do it. Anyways, um, let's see what's going on. Yeah, that's got one more. Yeah, and in here, uh, all around the array has a has a, uh, a coat closet kind of thing. Like if you go to a restaurant and he, he compares the token that you get for holding the uh, the, the you get, for them holding the coat, it's kind of like the government tax. And if you put the if you give them back the uh, give them back the token, you're, you're redeeming it. That's not a very good analogy on, on a race car. I've heard him use that. There, the variable there is if someone doesn't doesn't bring a code in, you know that sort of thing. That's a variable, and it's like, eh, not it's not that good. I mean, great teacher, great instructor on MMT. That is just not a bit, that, that's just not a very good um, analogy there. Um, and um, and Stephanie, so and Stephanie going with the with the taxation part. While it's true, it's, I mean, unfortunately it's not always true in terms of that, because if that was the case then, the, 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 the wealth tax that, that the wealthy get, uh, that itself devalues the money, because it's not taxed out, the taxes aren't supposed to be the redeeming of the currency. Which in reality, by law, that's the case. That's the one thing. Um, now, Warren Moser also do, does state that uh, that taxes are is a, is a forced provision, uh, and that was that, that 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 was originated by the UK in terms of the colonization of Africa. So if you look it up, that's pretty much exactly what happened as far as. It was a way for them to get uh, locals to do to do work for the government to, you know, clear fields and stuff like that. And back then, even now, and the UK, UK government in terms of that is pretty ruthless I and mean, it's fucked up. But that's how they did things back then, and in some cases still do. Uh, as far as uh, the the IRS can take away your property if you if you have back taxes. Look at uh, MC Hammer and other people, you know, Wesley Snipes has had, uh, you know, has had spent time in jail for tax evasion, so it's not, I mean, but if you think about it, in, in t taxes and being made of exchange gives the, and, and Fed, and Fed interest rates, uh, hike or not hike, give currency its value in terms of that. 
and supply chain actually yeah because if at the if the economy had a good supply chain 85 percent that means there'd be a surplus of goods and services meaning that the prices could be balanced out or less uh interest rates from the bank that does add a cost of goods and services especially if the supply chain is not very good that adds more cost to more goods and services uh corporate wealth uh lack of taxes that devalues the currency if <laughs> if if they force spot prices up that devalues the currency even more so the only thing that does not devalue currency is government spending government spending is supposed to maintain what the what the country already has in terms of its all of its supply chain it hasn't done that because those who pay for tax for for uh, for tax uh, uh, for tax uh, exemptions create the scarce that that libertarians are always saying that the government is created by uh, spending more so in reality the one side that is bitching about government spending and scarcity is actually creating the scarcity with its own policies so again they're pretty much a snake in their own tail in terms of that now in terms of not the Constitution Article 1 section 8 states that the that Congress is the issuer of what we pay in taxes so how in the world can a business that has not started up yet but the person or persons that have an idea for manufacturing or uh, producing uh, in some way a good or service uh, they need the money they need the capital as it were uh, to start it up and that's the reason why something like the small business administration which is funded by government spending uh, creates that business into a reality uh, unless you're a shark tank member and you invest that means that you put money in that you expect a return on investment uh, it's the same thing for, for 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 the government though so I mean both will get you if you don't give them a nice return on their investment um, so but the one good thing about it is the fact that either way it's from the federal government because Shark Tank members like Kevin O'Leary um, he the tax breaks he gets that money more like it goes back into small businesses so he, he's basically he's making money off of free money and if you have a and if you're if you have U.S. Treasury and you have enough money in there to make it profitable for you, just kind of let it go. And interest rates also pay you to save in terms of that. So, either way, that's how the money stays in the wealthier's pocket as far as that part goes. So, anyway, this is why I always tell people, learn MMT. If, any, if not for anything, learn that taxes don't pay for spending. Taxes are a provision for the government both state and local as well as federal uh, that's because it's a mean of exchange we have to use it not only to live but pay taxes uh, so yeah peace out for now and go to realprogressives.org uh, check out macro and chill 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Tuesdays or uh, listen to the original uh, version of it on Saturdays 8 a.m. Eastern realprogressives.org He's up now.